gearing up for the post-conference. Right now, things are heating up for UTSA and Javon Jackson, the big reason looking to lead the Roadrunners to a first round bye. But they'll have to get past the big man as freshman Charles Bassey and the Hilltoppers looking to clinch second place in the regular season. It's senior night and a farewell for Lamonte Bearden and he'd like to close out in style. Conference USA Basketball on BN Sports is next. Looking in at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and looking to deliver tonight, it is the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky against the Roadrunners of Texas San Antonio. Phil Shane alongside Megan Perry, and as we gear up, it is senior night. A farewell for the lone senior on the Hilltoppers, but this young WKU squad has made some noise. They will be tested tonight against the Roadrunners. They absolutely will. The Roadrunners were playing here not so long ago or coming in with a bit of chip on their shoulder and a lot to play for as we wind down the regular season and head into the postseason and tournament time. There as you see everyone having a little bit of fun tonight. Trying out of Monty Bearden has some fun trying to keep this man off the scoreboard. Well the name you need to know for UTSA it's Javon Jackson. This guy is simply a gamer. His slight frame don't let that fool you. He leads the Conference USA in scoring at 22 points per game and in the backcourt his partner Keaton Wallace is a dynamic guard for the road runners. He's having a bit of a coming out party for himself and is emerging as one of the conference's leading scores. Together, these two combined average 44 points per game, the best duo in Conference USA, and that gets him about third best nationally. And for the Hilltoppers, the name we all know, Charles Bassey, the freshman, has had an outstanding season. The big fella is the big guy inside, an NBA prospect and a dominant force, and his partner, Tavion Hollings, gets it done in the backcourt for WKU. He has one of the best mid-range games in the conference, and it's not too bad off the bounce as well. Over the last four games, Charles Bassey about 15 points per game, and Hollingsworth over the last three games, 18 points per game, so playing some of their best basketball as we head into the middle of March. Conference USA action looking in at Steve Henson, the Kansas native, and this Roadrunner squad has been running the road. We'll find out how well they can close out their road performance against a Western Kentucky squad who holds on to the overall series. In fact, an overtime victory last time they met in January. Keep an eye on Giovanni De Nicolau. The Italian native has been one of the key distributors in Conference USA play this year. 106 assists, and that'll be a problem for Rick Stansbury in his third season with the Toppers. This this team has been playing basketball since 1914. 23 times they've made it to the NCAAs, not since 2013, hoping that Charles Bassey will be able to lead them there. But Mark Nelson will get the start here today. How does that change things? Well, I think that shakes up the starting lineup definitely for Western Kentucky. But Coach Stansberry has been clear. He is looking for the five on the court that will provide the most energy for his team. And those are the five names he's going with. So um, no reason to doubt that at all. But let's see how the Hilltoppers put it all together. Kip Kissinger going out to toss the ball up. Tom Gaddis, Bill Jacobson, the other officials here tonight in this final Conference USA game of the season on BN Sports. And there, the early shot knocked down and grabbed by Bassey. Hilltoppers in blue tonight and in white. Keeping an eye. Chance here now for Javon Jackson driving in, scoops it up, comes up just a bit short and pulled down by Jared Savage. Savage stepping into the starting lineup for the Hilltoppers late in the season, and he's been a difference maker. Driving to the hole and up off the glass, Nelson, and he draws the early charge. Well, both teams at this point in time in the season know each other very well, Phil. And we'll see Nelson driving in, drawing 
picking up, excuse me, the, the charge in that last play, but we like that he's coming in aggressive, looking to attack. And the fans in Diddle Arena, they are on edge because they remember the last time that the Roadrunners were in this building. Javon Jackson dropped a historic 46 points in this arena. So all eyes on number two. Bounce pass inside. Jackson scoops it up and in. It will count. And Javon Jackson showing just some of that magic that he has displayed all season long. Well, he moves so well without the ball getting into the paint where he is at his best. Flip up off the glass. That's the magic that Javon Jackson brings to the, the floor. I call it the Javon Jackson show. He is impressive. Native of Bayamon, grew up just outside of Fort Worth. Bit of a legacy. This is Giovanni De Nicolau, the point guard for this Roadrunner squad. We'll talk about him a bit later. Bearden getting the start in his final home game of this 2019 campaign. Flips it over to Nelson, far side. Bassey shows. Opens up a lane, and the off balance shot by Savage hits the side of the backboard. Quickly down the other way, and the three pointer buried by De Nicolau. The key is quick. This is a UTSA squad that likes to run and gun. This is a team, the Roadrunners, that do not lack for scoring ability at all. Off to an early start, and the concern for Coach Stansberry is just in his team, it's just scoring, putting the ball in the hoop. And flipped in for Bassey. Saw last week, sprained his ankle, but still played 30 minutes on the weekend and showing no signs of it there on the strong move inside. The Hilltoppers have been anchored by the play of Charles Bassey all se season long. And they're going to continue to give the ball to the big guy because he certainly knows to do with it when he gets it. Moore keeps it moving. To Nicolau. Moore just outside the free throw line and hitting almost everything here in the early going, the Roadrunners. Bjor coming out, he gets the start in the place in place tonight of Nick Allen, number 25 for the Roadrunners, who is not available due to a nursing a toe injury. Um, so Bjor getting the start, but someone that previously started in the beginning of the season has a lot of playing experience. And finally drops a soft touch from Bearden, quickly up court, but a travel as Bjor could not get the brakes on in time. We look at Rick Stansbury and sitting just off the bench. Missed four games with back surgery and just came back a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, still not looking 100% comfortable. Bearden. And there, swinging that one in. Merrick Nelson, Stansbury rolling the dice a little bit, and it pays off as they're down by one now. Coach Stansbury is very clear. He's looking for offense. And Merrick Nelson, not shy at all, bringing it into the game. Been a huge spark for his team thus far. Coach Stansbury said in, in prior to this game that you know, we need every point that we can get tonight. And he's speaking back to the last time that the road runners, run, road runners came into Diddle Arena. They put on quite a show. And he said, there is no way we're going to let Jackson get off to the kind of start he had last time. No way he's getting 46 points. So we'll see what kind of lockdown defense the Hilltoppers have in store. And one off target. Well, they needed nearly 100 points to beat him and the extra session. And slips away. Wallace. Holding on to possession, looks to the sideline and trying to free Jackson. You're setting the pick and roll. Drives into the paint, can't get the shot away. And a tangle inside, and they're going to call Bior for the push. Well. So here in the early going, UTSA off to an early lead, but the Hilltoppers fighting back. A 
eight seven the score just over four minutes gone and the Hilltoppers band entertaining the fans what a season it has been 18 and 12 for Rick Stansbury's squad but on the other side Steve Henson has been working a little bit of magic with his backcourt he absolutely has Javon Jackson and Keaton Wallace you see in this graphic they are the third best scoring duo in the nation a combined 44 points only behind that of Zion Williamson and RJ Barrett of Duke as well as um, for the Jackrabbits Duam and David Jenkins 45 points per game each for them but an impressive potent offense and attack coming from both Jackson and Keaton Wallace and Javon Jackson only 40% from the field, but he's never met a shot that he doesn't like. Eaton Wallace, a little bit more versatile, filling in the gaps, the Dallas sophomore. Looking to take their first lead of the night. Mark Nelson, back from his stint in purgatory and in the starting lineup. Ball tapped away from Bassey and stepping up quickly, the Italian, the Nicolau. Amazy run and forced to retreat. Well, Danicolo brings a little bit more of a veteran presence on the floor for the Roadrunners. He's only a junior, but he's someone um, that has been the steady of this team. He ranks fifth all time in UTSA history and game started. So just a reliable presence and calming force on the floor is Danicolo. From the corner, and that is a little bit of a calming presence. It's the three. Nice chance there. UTSA up to a four-point lead. Bearden drives, dishes, and Nelson. Mentioned purgatory. This is a player who got into a little bit of trouble earlier this season and hasn't played for more than the last 10 games, stepped out to grab a single minute against Southern Miss, and he gets the start here today. I guess a chance at redemption from Coach Rick Stansbury. Well, so far, Merrick Nelson's off to a hot start. He is attacking this roadrunner defense. He's getting two feet into the paint and wreaking havoc. Nice little scoop by Bearden. Back down by two. Bill Toppers have only faced the Roadrunners six times, winning four. Spin by Fronen into the paint. Goes up the hook shot that almost falls, rolling off. And Nelson the rebound. The January 31st game, 96 to 88 in overtime. Steve Henson going out of his way to say that they are focused to make sure that does not happen again tonight. They felt that they had a win ripped away, but from the corner again, Nelson, and it looks like he's been saving these shots up. Merrick Nelson is having a welcome back party. He looks like he has not missed a beat, has been truly outstanding, showing us a little bit of what he can do off the bounce, mid-range game. He's been the true spark for this team thus far. Again, played one minute against FIU in a span of 17 games. And getting out for that solitary minute against Southern Miss last time out and closing things out. Well, maybe not closing because, again, should they get the victory here tonight, they would be the second seed and would get a bye in that first round of the Conference USA playoffs. Jun stepping in. Well, one thing that I continue to be impressed by from Western Kentucky is just really the depth of this team. Charles Bassey getting a rest, but they don't lack for size at all. With Jun coming in off the bench, they continue with the length and strong interior presence. Nice pull down by Nelson. Already his third board to go along with six points. Here's Bearden. Two for two on the night. Thought about a third. Hollingsworth on the little spin. And an easy 12-foot jumper. Tavion Hollingsworth, Phil. We talk a lot about Charles Bassey, but Tavion Hollingsworth, he's the scoring leader for the Hilltoppers. And he's comfortable off the, on the floor, off the bounce. He can shoot the ball, has a nice mid-range game. You know, I really think that he is the motor and steady of this Hilltoppers team. And you see 20 seconds on the shot clock. They won't need it. Jackson flying in the air, tries to 
bang it off of Hollingsworth and does. Even with the bad back, you can see Rick Stansbury pointing where the out of bounds line was, and he is livid. Well, Coach Stansbury, a little spicy on the sideline, not afraid to let the referees know exactly how he feels. And you see the ball going out of bounds. Jackson, absolutely. I believe off of him. But it looks like maybe Hollingsworth's sneaker hit the sideline before Jackson's heroics, but he's not one to hide his emotions, is he? That's, I think, a little after the play had already been called out. Kip Kissinger right there on the sideline. And a technical foul against the Western Kentucky coach. The coach stands very, very composed, gentleman, usually of sorts, but when he feels strong and passionately about his, well, he does feel strong and passionate about his players. Um, and if he feels that they're being wronged in any kind of way, he is not going to be shy about speaking up. Two for two from the stripe for the Roadrunners' best free throw shooter, Keaton Wallace. But he's got to be careful here. So Coach Stansbury knows he already has one technical. He cannot continue to be in the ref's ear. He has to stay in that coach's box because with the second one, of course, that's an automatic ejection. And also the fact they don't want to give too many cheap points away to the Roadrunners. From distance, the left-handed jumper by Wallace. Nothing but net. Ooh, Keaton Wallace, he is a gamer. We talked about him, Javon Jackson. I mean, they're both together so dynamic, but Wallace, he is a lethal threat. 34-point average between the two. Out wide for Nelson. That one hits back iron. Hard landing for Hollingsworth, and it's stripped away by Ayaye. Far side. Marks again driving in is Wallace. Travel, though, as he drives to the hoop. Keaton Wallace just so dynamic and the Hilltoppers are locked in on him him and Javon Jackson trying to make sure they close up the seams of the defense and not allow them to penetrate to the rim so easily. So Mustafa Jun, the Senegalese transfer, getting a chat from his coach. Talk about how young this team is for Western Kentucky and the addition of Bassey did put them up there among the preseason favorites. Nice little spin inside as Tolu Smith out there, the hometown freshman. Well, I think the Western Kentucky absolutely has an advantage on the interior, and they're not shy about exploiting it. Tolu Smith, Charles Bassey, Jean on the inside, they can have their way. Defensively trying to contain that man next to impossible though as he sinks one from about 17. And that was something also they're gonna have to jump up in their scoring to try and keep up with the road runner. Something they were able to do in January. Hollingsworth drives baseline. Whistle blows. And a foul against the road runners 18 16 utsa back in front well utsa sticking to their game plan and executing it well coach stansbury not so happy about some of the calls on the floor but western kentucky working their way back well it is senior night so looking to throw a party western kentucky and been a quick start here, 18 to 16, as we near the midway point of this opening half. Charles Bassey has been a key, Megan, this year. And as you take a look, out honoring the rest of the conference. Yes, impressive nine times freshman of the week. The rest of the league, just eight honors. But that really speaks of the dominance that Charles Bassey has displayed all season long on both ends of the floor. I mean, he really has gotten busy, a rim protector. He scores at will um, and is an NBA prospect for a reason, playing at a very, very high level. We've mentioned a few times this season, this is the first ever year that Western Kentucky has set up a pro day, and it was for a player that had never even played a minute with them in some ways but talked about how this is a young western kentucky squad they were tested early in the non-conference part of the season nice little 
jumper that scoops in and out. And it looks like Rick Stansbury using that youth movement to try and get even younger. Two of their recruits honored as finalists for Kentucky's Mr. Basketball. So Massey might have some superstar company next year. A young, talented, and gifted team that really has a strong upside, only room for growth and to get better. I think there's some very special things in store for the Hilltoppers. See Jake Omer wearing the 21, never bashful about shooting, but tends to do a lot of the dirty work. This is wide, little behind the back dribble by Josh Anderson, Mr. Highlight for the Hilltoppers. Omer from distance, front rim. And an easy grab for Adrian Rodriguez. I'm interested to see that the Roadrunners are walking the ball up, slows the game down a bit. And this is the Roadrunner team that really likes a faster pace of play. And they're into the corner and bottom of the net. Yaya again. Six of 35 from behind the arc, but that does not make him more bashful. It's his first of the night tonight. And the back in is Smith. Nothing there. Catches Hollingsworth by surprise. That might be a first. And now the Roadrunners a chance to run away a bit. Well, I've been really impressed with the effort of the Roadrunners early on. They're doing a good job of executing in what's mostly been half-court sets. They haven't really gotten out in transition as much as they'd really like to do. We see the turnover battle almost even. UTSA has four. Western Kentucky, just three turnovers, but still a lot of room to see how that works itself out over the course of the season. Nicolau handling the point, runs in the family, his brother, the national team point guard for the Italian national team. His father, former national team player and still coaching. Well, basketball is in the blood, for I just say, for De Nicolau. I mean, he grew up around the game. He's a gym rat himself, and, and it shows. He's been able to soar to be the elite player that he is now. Which doesn't hurt when you're passing to guys like Jackson and Wallace right, to make absolutely. you look good. <laughs> absolutely. Scoop underneath as Fronin gets lost in the shuffle. And it is a seven-point lead now. All that hard work fighting back. And Western looking up at another mountain. Bearden. Palmer a little closer this time, but still far enough away. Jackson flipped across. Good cover. Nelson up for Bearden, and the senior lays it in nicely. I think that's what it's going to take. The Hilltoppers have the opportunity to get out and transition in the open floor. They really thrive there. And a chance for a couple easy baskets, I think, to get their momentum going, find a little bit more rhythm. Trying to find a gap to Nicolau. Over for Fronin. Back to Nicolau. Steps back from three and buries it. Listen, to Nicolau can shoot that three with pretty good consistency. He's efficient from out there, and you have to contest him. And they are on the other side. Shot for shot, Bearden now. It's his first three of the night. Take a look at the stats, Megan. 60% from the field for the Roadrunners, 56 for the Hilltoppers. Shooting over 70% behind the arc is UTSA. Well, I'm here, you know, Phil. I'm here for the <laughs> shootout. You know, let it fly. I think Debbie and Tonelli say, shoot till your arm falls off, fellas. Let's go. Beard. Dishes for Omer. Throws it up off glass. Jackson. Listen to six feet tall, but he says they might be exaggerating a bit. He says maybe 5'11 with the hair. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. That six foot ish frame plays much bigger. He plays more like he's about six foot ten. Here's Wallace. Finds a gap. Looked like he was trying to flip it over for Frona, but tapped away. 26 21. UTSA in front. The UTSA off to a fast and hot start, but the Hilltoppers are climbing their way back into it. 26-21, the road runners over at the Hilltoppers. Looking in at 
the two huddles. Rick Stansbury sitting down, giving his speech. Steve Henson was on his feet and screaming a little bit. Not happy with the attention that his dynamic duo is getting. Take a look at the bonus play. Remember, they are in pods, as they call them, to try and increase the strength of schedule come selection time. And Old Dominion, who closed the pre-break atop, continuing their dominance. They are guaranteed of a top spot, but Western could join them at number two. UAB currently on the outside, battling Southern Miss for that final top four spot that would guarantee a bye in the opening round of the conference tournament. How do you think things have worked? If you actually look at some of the prognostications for the NCAA, even the NIT, as Bassey fouled on his drive to the hole, it doesn't look like Conference USA is going to benefit for the moment. But do you think it's still a good idea? Do you think it might be something that Conference USA brings back next year? I do, Phil. I think it's good. I think we have to at least let it play out a couple years to really understand the impact or if it had any impact. Uh, but I think one thing that's very, very clear is that Conference USA, they definitely definitely have teams at the top of the standings that can compete and or beat some Power 5 teams uh, that are playing in the NCAA tournament. I mean, there is no question about that. And I think... You know, over time, I think people are going to start to recognize that one and or more teams should definitely get a look um, for some postseason play. And you look at some of the others that broke out quickly, like a FIU or North Texas, but it's Western Kentucky who tested themselves against better squads at the start of the season. Fouled on the drive is Byron Fronin. And now that they get to the tail end of the season, they're starting to see the payoff. They are, and I just have to say, my goodness, this last drive going up, Iron Front going up hard for the jam, but denied by Josh Anderson. Anderson, 21 blocks, not bad for a guard in the backcourt for the Hilltoppers. But Phil, you know, just to continue our conversation about the new scheduling format, I do think that part of what has hurt uh, I think the conference is, quite frankly, the collapse of some of the teams that were playing so well early on in the season. Uh, and, you know, North Texas started out really, really strong, and they struggled of late. And I think that was a team that was starting to garner some national attention and some claim, um, and unfortunately it just hasn't panned out the way they would have liked. To cross by Beard. And a swish by Jared Savage. Bowling Green native getting Western Kentucky back to within two. Well, Jared Savage is a player The Coach Stansberry is not shy to call his name. He needs Jared Savage to score with the consistency that he's capable of. Nice little jump by DeNicolau. Averages seven points. Already up to 11 in the opening half. There's Hollingsworth. Almost daring him to shoot as Jackson. So he does stop and pop. Doesn't drop. Brought down by DeNicolau. The junior guard. Oh, what a shot. DeNicolau going coast to coast. And if Coach Stansberry has a chance to run that back in film, I know there will be some discussion about not stopping the ball soon enough. You can't let a player like DeNicolau go down the court untouched into the red of the lane. My goodness, unacceptable. Anderson left-handed banger off the glass in and out Hollingsworth also can't get it to fall Jackson looked like he might have been hit but the ball had already left his hands and it comes up well short and this is the first time you're just seeing Javon Jackson play a lot of people might be saying what kind of shot is that what a poor choice but to tell you the truth Phil that is his game that's the type of shot that he knocks down with consistency now that didn't fall but I can tell you he'll keep shooting the ball and others will his dad a basketball player, his grandfather, a Puerto Rican legend, both as a player and as a coach. Right at Argentina, a victory over the U.S. historically back in the day. And with that in mind, Javon Jackson grew up inside the gym. Well, it shows he has in the gym kind of range. He has outside the gym kind of range. <laughs> That's true. 
And Lamonte Beard, and so active, getting into the lane. He's having a heck of a first half. I mean, thus far, he has nine points. He's four or five from the floor. And let me tell you something else. He has four assists. He is one of the best facilitators and distributors on this Hilltoppers team. And to, and nine assists on the season. Exactly, Phil. And to back it up, he has a three to one assist turnover ratio. So it's good to keep the ball in his hands. He doesn't turn it over. He'll take care of it. And he scores. And as the lone senior on this team, he is locked in understanding this is the last time he's playing in Diddle Arena in front of what has been a raucous and really supportive, outstanding crowd. And he wants to take in this moment. He does not want to take it, take it for granted at all. Again, barely 10 seconds off the shot clock. And DeNicolau drives but can't get the ball to fall. Bearden in for Hollingsworth and acrobatically drops it home. And he'll head to the line with a chance to make it three. Actually, Merrick Nelson, the player who drew the attention, and Hollingsworth able to take advantage. Hollingsworth in the open court. You see him running strong. It's the contact, flips it up high off the glass, and one little fist pump gets the crowd pumped up. Just when he thought his team was pulling away, back down to a one-point game. Western did lead for a brief period about nine minutes ago, but then again, remember last week, the game we called against UAB where they didn't lead until very late, but still closed out with the victory. Nice by Wallace. Keaton Wallace taking just the air out of Dill Arena. You can hear it that last shot. John Jackson puts up a lot of shots, and Keaton Wallace, he puts up a healthy few as well. But I think that Keaton Wallace is starting to become a, a little bit more of a efficient scorer. Um, and you can see the range that he shoots with. I mean, impressive young man. Well, loose on the floor. Wallace knocks it free to his backcourt mate, Jackson. Impeded as he comes across midcourt. And it looks like they're going to call that one against Bassey. And that could be a little bit of a problem later in the game, although still just his first of the night. Yeah, that foul on Bassey absolutely is not where you want him to pick up a foul, if at all. But just his first foul of the evening. So I would say doing pretty good with just about four minutes of change remaining in the first half. On the way to Nicolau already with two personals, as is Bior and both of those players on the Roadrunner bench. Angled up by Rodriguez, finding Wallace, and again from distance. This one doesn't go in. Out for Bearden. Hollingsworth in traffic, slapped away, and Jackson's going to be called for the foul. That's going to be foul number two on Javon Jackson, so something to watch because he definitely, as we said, between Jackson and Wallace, that's 56% of this Roadrunners offense. UTSA leads 34 to 30, less than four minutes to go in this one as they look to clinch a bye in the opening round of the Conference USA playoffs. Nicolau. Out of the game at the moment, a game high 13, but hot on his heels. Monty Bearden with 11. Take a look at what he's brought to the game, though, the Italian point guard. Well, Giovanni De Nicolo, he's three of three from the three point line. He is taking names and numbers from distance. You cannot leave him open. Do not go behind the screen because that's three points automatically. A clean stroke. And like we mentioned, De Nicolo. He's great off the bounce as well, able to create a little bit, but he is one of the veteran leaders of this team. So coming in to a big road game like this, he's ready. He understands what it's going to take and is leading the way with 13 points tonight, and he only averages about seven. Again, getting hot as the season progresses. 16 and 13 overall, the road runners. Western Kentucky 18 and 12 as they look to try and crash the 20 point 20 win mark but that's going to have to come in the conference usa tournament this is their final game of the regular season 
and get a chance to sit back on this final bonus day and watch everyone else fight for those final two spots. Hollingsworth. 78% from the line on the year. A little rough on that last one, but now a two of three. As you pointed out, some deliberate stretches from a UTSA perspective. Cronin spins inside, gets the shot up, but Savage gets the board. Great stop by the Hilltoppers. See what they can do on the other end. They hit a three, a chance to try and tie it up. Slammed backwards was Bearden. Fouled in the process, he'll go to the line. Well, it is senior night. The only senior is leading the way. Well, Lamonte Bearden is having himself a game. He is one of the best creators one-on-one -on, -one on the floor that the Hilltoppers have, and he is really taking it to UTSA this evening. 11 points on the night, four or five from the floor. Broadcasters jinx there at the free throw line. <laughs> but really a strong showing by Lamonte Bearden. And, and someone that Coach you know, Stansbury really talks about, he's playing some of the best basketball of his career right now. A really tough start, was ineligible at the beginning of the season, but has aligned some things off the court for himself. And that, Coach Stansbury thinks, has really helped spark and been the catalyst of some of the growth that he's seen on the court from Bearden. Again, it's the little things as Javon Jackson tried the acrobatics, getting to class early, eating breakfast, just part of the lessons a college basketball coach has to instill. And it might sound like a little bit of a joke, but in many ways that is what their job is because life goes on after basketball. It absolutely does. And I think what Coach Stansbury is really alluding to is discipline. He has seen the growth in the discipline that Lamonte Bearman has showed both on and off the court. We're bouncing it in and Bassey bouncing it home. Yes, sir, Mr. Bassey. Not going to be much more open than that. He finally gets an easy look at the basket. Wallace drives in, slapped away by Bearden. Out of bounds, and Keaton Wallace trying to figure out what hit him. You see on the inside, Bassey, the recipient of the nice bounce pass there by Hollingsworth, those two working together. But I think you're right, Phil. I think for Keaton Wallace, we talked about a little bit of frustration for him. He's been driving into the paint and not having a lot of success, not getting the fouls called that he's used to. So he's got to figure out how to adjust. Hollingsworth thought he had it. Wallace stepped out quickly. Just over 10 on the shot clock. Bearden in for Bassey. Almost gets it to fall. Quickly the other way. The road runners. Jackson draws contact and slapped away by Nelson. No, sir, says Nelson. Devon Jackson is looking like, where did you come from? With a nice recovery and block by Mayor Nelson. And again, talking about the lessons he was trying to impart on Monty Bearden. Similar to Marek Nelson, the Plano sophomore. Got caught with a DUI earlier and was suspended. Stansbury said there's some things more important than basketball. And obviously, to this point, it seems like he thinks the lesson's been learned. Well, coach Stansberry is a coach, but even more than that, a mentor and, and plays um, a very you know, like paternal-like role, you know? And you can just see it in, in his demeanor, a gentleman that he is. And he's concerned not only about the players that he sees in practice every day and in the games, but what they're doing their time off the court. Um, is the most important thing because that translates for the rest of their lives. Just under two minutes left to go in this opening half. Now that's 85% from the line. Now a perfect four of four on the night. Keaton Wallace with 10 points, but he can fill it up. He had a 45-point game on the road at Marshall. So he is someone that definitely is a potent scorer. And just because he's off to a slow start doesn't mean he can't eat up fast. Hollingsworth comes up short. Jackson puts on the brakes and then gets it back. Tenth three-pointer attempt by the Hilltoppers tonight. Just one behind UTSA. And that's a little bit of a surprise considering 
Northwestern's opposition has more than 200 more three-point attempts than the Hilltoppers do, but tonight they're going stride for stride. Two-point game, Roadrunners in front, and we will keep it here. This half drawing closer, and important for Western Kentucky to stay close when it looked like the Roadrunners were about to pull away. Well, it looks like Western Kentucky's really settled in. Um, they haven't been able to quite take the lead, but something that I've noticed, I think when UTSA comes down on offense, they are really keening in on trying to take Charles Bassey out to the perimeter. If you watch some of the screens, they're trying to get a switch, get Bassey out in the perimeter and get a guard to be able to penetrate around him and get to the basket. Uh, and I think thus far, Charles Bassey's been very disciplined. He's not fouled coming out and helping, and he's recovered well. But I think that's something to watch as we progress through this game. Um, because over the course of the game, you know, that kind of activity on the perimeter can wear the big guy down. And I'm interested to see how he adjusts and, and if US, UTSA continues that type of attack. One of the other things you pointed out earlier was pace of play. Both teams actually averaging about 17 seconds of possession, so maybe a little higher than the Hilltoppers are used to, a lot lower than UTSA is. Flipping it down to the baseline, back for Wallace up top. Driving is Fronin, can't get in. Three seconds, two seconds, Wallace slips and can't get the shot away. Good defense by Western Kentucky. Quite the defense, defensive stand by the Hilltoppers to close out possibly the half. They say defense wins championships, and the Hilltoppers have locked down of late. They've only led for a little more than 70 seconds in this opening half. A chance to take the lead if they can sink a three. Five on the shot clock. Hollingsworth, top for Nelson from 24. Can't get it to fall, but Bassey impeded in his attempt for the rebound. And they're going to call that foul on Keaton Wallace, and he's someone as a guard of the position. You can see the rise that this kid has. He's not shy to mix it up. He averages about six rebounds per game as well, so... Not afraid to crash the boards. Bassey, swish, 6'11", freshman, 77% from the line on the year. And there, as you can see, the foul. Bassey trying to crash the ball, but he is relentless on the glass. Rebounds outside of his area so well. A tough guard all the way around. Bassey sinks them both, and we're tied. Five-second discrepancy between the game clock and shot clock. Hilltoppers might get another chance. Wallace from midcourt. Here's the play from the sideline and Steve Henson. Looks like they're going to play this one down, try and limit the chance for a tops chance. Trying to split loose ball. Rodriguez picks it up. Fronin. Fouled as he gets the shot away from distance. One second on the shot clock. Byron Fronin with the heads up play. He's going to get three attempts as he was fouled behind that three point line. Just a smart play. Puts the ball on the floor, a little pump fake. Olu Smith reaching in. Not one of the better three-point shooters, not one of the better free-throw shooters on this Roadrunner squad. And they are checking, I think, to see where his foot was at the time of the foul. There would be two or three shots from the line. The other thing also could be is what this, was the shot actually in the process when Smith made contact. They are saying it was behind the arc. Byron Cronin with the, with the pump fake. You see, and then the dribble. We, uh, we couldn't see. The referee was actually blocking our view from that vantage point, but it looked like the monitor confirmed for them three shots it's going to be at the line. And the first comes up short. Ronan, just a really tough kid for UTSA. The second. 
It's the back iron. Bill Fonin was the first recruit um, for Coach Henson, and he's been a stalwart of this program. And he can't hit any of the three. That's going to hurt. Two seconds, one second. Bearden looking to pass it off and almost passes it in. We're tied at the break at 36. Well, both teams trying to figure it out. UTSA with the hot start, but Western Kentucky was able to climb back in it behind the outstanding play of their senior, Lamonte Bearden. I'm watching Rick Stansbury pace off the court. I think it's more than the back that is hurting him at the moment, but has to like the fight back that his Hilltoppers have shown. Another 20 minutes and maybe more to go as Western Kentucky looking to clinch a bye in the first round of the Conference USA Tournament. And their coach looking to spark a fire and getting it done on senior night. Lamonte Bearden leading the way with 12 points as Western Kentucky fights back to a 36 all tie at the half. Well, UTSA pulling away early on, but unable to keep their high-flying ways. Western Kentucky fighting back, and that's where we stand, 36-36 at the break on this senior night, the final home game of the season for Western Kentucky. Phil Shane alongside Megan Perry. It has been a fun one to this point. It's been a fun season. It's been a great, fun season. We had a, a marvelous time, and looking here at the... First Team Conference USA, according to myself, Javon Jackson, B.J. Stiff, Charles Bassey, John Elmore, and John Davis are some of the most impressive, I think, over the course of this season. Some outstanding individual performances and leading their team. And we start with B.J. Stiff. He has helped his team, the Monarchs, to the top of the Conference USA standings. He has been dynamic, and John Elmore for the Thundering Herd. He has been magical, the magic that is John Elmore, scoring in so many different ways. And John Davis, with first-year head coach this, this season, he has led the way for Charlotte, who hasn't had the season that they would have liked, but John Davis making it very difficult for anyone that meets him. Well, right now, Conference USA tournament on the horizon, but there's still another game to go. Take a look at the way the tournament would be bracketed if it started before tip-off tonight. Old Dominion with that late surge. Southern Miss also forcing their way into a bye. I think it's really interesting, the rise of Southern Miss, and they've been kind of floating under the radar, but not so much anymore. We're starting to take notice of what they're doing. Talk about those early starts for FIU in North Texas, but they have stumbled of late, and should they get through their opening game, they would face the top and number two seeds respectively. Keep an eye on Marshall. Kind of have a feeling that uh, Johnny Basketball might have a few more baskets in him before this season is over. I would absolutely agree. I think a lot of these teams, their records aren't really indicative of how good they are. So a lot of basketball to be played, and I think some surprises in store for Conference USA. Well, will there be a surprise tonight at Diddle Arena? Western Kentucky certainly hopes not, but there's another half of basketball to go. Tied at 36, be in sports and Conference USA. It is 36 points apiece at the half in a match that has seen the Roadrunners pull out, but then the Hilltoppers catch up. Another 20 minutes of basketball and maybe more. Phil Shane, Megan Perry with you. Conference USA on BN Sports and taking a look around the nation. Well, this is probably one to make the former K-State star Steve Henson smile, but the Jayhawks no longer ruling the roost of the Big 12. A little bit more parity in the Big 12, but a surprise, definitely. The Jayhawks have had a long-standing run of that Big 12 title, and it's finally snapped. Buffalo knocking off Ohio. Now 27 wins as they win the MAC regular season crown. Talked about dynamic duels in the backcourt, and even if you aren't a Duke fan, nice to see Zion Williamson coming back. Absolutely. All eyes on Duke and what Zion Williamson will be able to do as we head into postseason play. And bracketology, as you see, Duke, Gonzaga, Tennessee, and Virginia. The odds on favorites to grab the top seeds once the NCAA tournament draw gets taken. Now there's plenty more going on. Mentioned Conference USA and 
their performance. It is John Elmore, and you see that this past week. He will stop his NCAA career as the all-time leading scorer and assist man in Conference USA history. Well, he's done so much for the herd, and they're going to be sad to see him go, but he is putting in work and, uh, you know, having fun doing so. Charles Bass, you've seen what he's been able to do, and again, his ninth Freshman of the Week honors. Old Dominion, regular season champions, but now they're going to have to do it in the postseason. Old Dominion looks good standing at the top of the conference for the regular season, but they're definitely going to have a couple challenges headed their way as they enter tournament play. And one week from tonight, that will get underway in Frisco. Eh, not that far away as UTSA will be looking to try and make themselves at home. Again, will they get the bye? We'll find out. Take a look. Mention the all-time leading score and assist man. That's a rarity as the same man holding on to both records, and he's not done yet. Well, neither are we. UTSA against Western Kentucky, another half of basketball from Diddle Arena to come. We'll show you the highlights from the first half when we continue. Thirty-six points apiece. Just when it looked like the Roadrunners were about to run away. WKU fights back, and it is a tie game at the break. How did we get there? Well, on the Roadrunners' side, everyone focused on the two shooters. It was the man who normally dishes that was in the spotlight. Yes, Giovanni De Nicolao had quite a first half. He came out hot from behind that three-point line, stroking it with ease. Able to find him on the perimeter. He moved so well without the ball and really was the catalyst behind the really strong start for UTSA. You see him not only from behind three, but the nice floater into the lane, showing us a little bit of his offensive arsenal. And then Lamonte Bearden for Western Kentucky. It's senior night, and so how appropriate for the start that he has. Thus far, 12 points. He's four or five from the field. A little shake and bake with that mid-range floater. Some of the best in the game from him. And then out in the open court. An easy look as he lays it in. He was excellent in the first half. Provided the energy and the spark that Coach Stansberry has been really looking for. Take a look at the stats, and as you can see things cooling off just a little bit after a torrid start but still impressive and those points in the paint by western kentucky helping and when they get outside it is the senior lamont bearden leading the way yes bearden has been excellent as we saw in Nicolau for utsa um i think you know we're even even 36 36 so we have a, a long way to go here lots of things to be figured out uh but however solid half of basketball and some great shooting from both teams well, we'll find out who will step up. Some stretching going on as this halftime winding to a close in the second half, just on the other side. Well, lining up to get set for the start of the second half. Looking at the keys we talked about at the start. And while it is a tie game at the moment, containing Jackson and Wallace was one of the keys. And to this point, Wallace with 10, but Jackson just five on two of nine shooting. Well, I think that's the biggest surprise if you're a Roadrunners fan. You know, Javon Jackson hasn't really been held, held to single digits all season long. So uh, for him to have only five points, I think is a big story. We'll see if he's able to bounce back. Nice dish inside. Wallace can't get the shot, but gets it far side to Nicolau's shot. Hits front iron, gets his own rebound, and then flips wide for Wallace. Fresh shot clock. Nice little jump on the baby hook by Fronen. Talking about Javon Jackson, only five times this season has he been held under 20 points, let alone single digits. And two of those is first two games coming back from season ending knee surgery last year missed the first three games this season now just the third lead of the night for Western Kentucky and Jared Savage takes Western Kentucky back over in two taking the lead he is shooting close to 40 percent from the three this year and able to hold on with BR and then going coast to coast. But a travel in the process as Charles Bassey looks on in disbelief. 
Bassey got a little bit excited. The big man in the open floor has an opportunity to lead the break. Let's go. The <laughs> and the ball just gets a bit away from him because he was looking to do damage on that round. Smile on the big Nigerian's face. Well, I always think it's a little bit funny because when the big man gets the basketball on the open floor, everyone gets a little nervous. You can see players and coaches over there twiddling their thumbs. <laughs> Reach in foul is thrown and getting the job done again. Well, we saw it last week. A rather scary sight with his ankle buckling and he actually injured his knee. Unable to play the rest of the game, but he still came back on the weekend and played over 30 minutes against Southern Miss. It was a muted performance, just 9.7 boards, but the fact he was able to play 30 had to give Western Kentucky some hope. Nice shot from distance. Jackson. Well, so much for a quiet first half. There he is, Mr. Jackson. He had 46 points the last time he was in this building. And that was nasty. It was. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say it, but you did. But to tell you, you know, best believe he remembers that performance and carries the confidence from that night. Career high. Most points Western Kentucky has ever allowed at home. So that was obviously a focus. Long three-pointer. Nicolau bringing it down. Wallace trying to get some separation, but Nelson pays the price. You see Javon Jackson moving so well without the basketball, gets free, and he does not need much space at all. He doesn't even have to be square to the basket. I mean, as long as that elbow is lined up, he lets it fly. You see career high 46 points, third most in UTSA history. Bowman takes it across, so back for Jackson again. How quickly they close. Eight seconds, seven seconds on the shot clock. Why not have a go? Rebound pulled down by Bjor. Fresh, but they don't need the time as Jackson drives home back into double digits again. A big rebound by Bjor. They don't necessarily need him to score, but his defense and his rebounding ability, that's what they're looking for from him. And he's playing tough on the inside. Averages about five boards a game. Already got three tonight. Chance to stretch the lead again. Look away pass in for Bior, but held up. Jump ball the call, and the Hilltoppers will get it on the arrow. Quick hands by Tavian Hollingsworth. You see Jackson letting it fly with Bior skying for the rebound. And then Javon Jackson, what he does so well, he never stops moving. If you want a workout, sign up to guard this guy <laughs> because he does not take breaks at all. He's constantly looking for ways to attack. Talking about the technique, he points out his grandfather was a left-handed shooter, so he kind of learned to shoot whichever way was open. But the key, as you point out, is as soon as the ball leaves his hand, he's already thinking of the next play. <laughs> he absolutely is. And, you know, he can just score in so many different ways and so different positions on the floor. And he doesn't lack for confidence, that's for sure. Wallace to Bior drives on Bassey. <laughs> Tried to get him airborne, and the Nigerian slaps it away. Yeah, no way. If you're going to go in, take it in. No hesitation. And for Bassey, who lands awkwardly, tries to bang it off of a road runner. And the Nicolau goes down hard. Well, Bior in that last possession, he hesitates. I think he was trying to pump fake, but you have one try at that. If not, Charles Bassey, he's too quick off his feet. He plays with great anticipation and too much, much length and power to go in soft. And the Roadrunners are matched up in their man-to-man -man defense. In prior matchups, we saw a little bit more zone defense in efforts to clog up the lane and contain Charles Bassey. Distance. Long shot. Long rebound pulled down by Fronen. That's more his game. Averages seven rebounds per game. Nicolau off for Wallace. Weaving their way in. Bounce pass for Bior. But he can't control the bounce. Stripped away. Chance to tie it up. In for Nelson. Slammed by Jackson. And did get the ball, though. Wasted opportunity for the Hilltoppers. 
It was a hard foul by Javon Jackson, but he's come out on fire trying to get UTSA going in Western Kentucky, only down by two points, wanting to play through their inside presence in Charles Bassey. Oh, about four minutes into the second half and a couple of things to note that is the third foul against Javon Jackson only two more to give as we take a look four of 13 shooting but hot hand here to start the second half well Jackson came out all about business he's much more active without the basketball freeing up getting to the lane behind the three-point line he's so difficult to guard because he never stops moving and he learned a lot of the game from his grandfather you see in that picture there uh, a lot of respect for him and just growing up in the gym there you see runs in the family another story and as you see he will take a seat with those three personal fouls can't afford to see him foul out tonight but the man who stepped in to start this season when he was unavailable is the big Aussie who is in the starting lineup again a Bior because of the injury to Nick Allen here from the stripe, Merrick Nelson, 63% from the line. You're born in South Sudan, refugee into Egypt, and then eventually to Australia, but grew up with a dream of basketball in his heart. One of the reasons that the junior was given the chance at the start of the season. But a bit of nerves at the start, which meant when Jackson came back, he went back to the bench at least until Allen was hurt a couple of weeks ago. And we're seeing that here, three or four straight chances that he's bobbled. Yeah, well, what you see Wallace, Wallace with the charge. Wallace is having a really difficult time, and I'll tell you the truth, I think the difference for Keaton Wallace, he's doing a lot of trying to create one-on-one, -on -one, dribbling the basketball, but I think that Western Kentucky's been a little bit more physical with him, and he hasn't necessarily responded to that um, as well as maybe Coach Henson would have liked him to. It's creating turnovers. 11 turnovers in the night for UTSA. Only two of six shooting for Wallace. Jackson, four of 13, so six of 19 from their dynamic duo. A little turnaround by Nelson. Won't fall. Ripped away by Rodriguez. Redshirt freshman out of Tulsa. And also, for, let's take note of who's guarding Keaton Wallace. It's Tavion Hollingsworth. And that's interesting because Hollingsworth tends to be one of the better defenders for Western Kentucky, but he's also their leading scorer. So I'm just saying that to say he is playing elite basketball on both ends of the floor. And a little too eager to get to the hoop by Nelson on that one. Wallace seeming to rush that last shot. And after a torrid start, mentioned UTSA was shooting over 60%. From behind the arc back down to about 41 right now and they're tied again it's the fourth time the score has been level Nicolau oh so sweet Nicolau with a nice touch he's had a lot of success getting to the rim and I don't think that's by accident at all I mean we talk about his three-point shooting, but he's shown tonight that he can put the ball on the floor and he can attack and, and really convert at the rim. It's 15 points on the evening. Impressive effort by Giovanni Nicola. Driving inside, and somehow it goes in, but a hard landing. Rodriguez getting tangled. And you could just... See the body twist as Bearden somehow gets the ball to fall. Bearden driving into the lane hard, and you couldn't quite see from that angle there, but it looks like he spins in the air and comes down hard on his side, but he's walking off under his own power, so hopefully he can shake it off. A little spin in the air. Looks like maybe his hip, the left side of his back is where he actually caught himself. Again, if he cannot take this, and it looks like he's walking to the dressing room. So on senior night, UTSA chance to pick who they want to take the free throw. Well, Coach Dansbury always talks about Lamonte Beard, and it's just a guy that, you know, he just wants to hoop. He loves basketball, and he's, you know, everything about him um, really is about 
being able to excel on the court. He's playing some of his best basketball ever right now, so we hope that he gets back on the court for one last run in Diddle Arena. Called the turnover before the ball went in. Can't take advantage of it. Again, the big man Dior coming up empty. Hollingsworth, Savage, back to Hollingsworth. Anderson thought about it. And foul underneath. Colu Smith going over the back. Well, Josh Anderson was insert inserted into the game just a few minutes ago for Western Kentucky. And he's someone that provides normally a very large scoring punch for the Hilltoppers. He can hit big shots. He knows how to go get a bucket. But he's really struggled to find his rhythm tonight. Wallace driving in on Bassey. Bounces it. Chance for AIA. Dior from distance. By the way, you might notice Savage back out there. Jared Savage, the Bowling Green Jr. playing with three personals. Jackson still on the bench for UTSA with three. And with Jackson on the bench, UTSA still holding the lead, 47 to 43. I think that's really important to point out because when he comes <laughs> off the bench, it's just even more buckets. Hollingsworth. Now up to eight points on the night. Off shooting for him, just three of 11. Wallace trying to find an opening. Left-handed shooter. Chance for Nicolau, but the whistle had already blown. I think a really solid defensive effort by the Helltoppers. You see them rotating well, communicating well through screens, a lot of movement in motion, denying, quite frankly, Keaton Wallace any lanes to drive. I think the size of Josh Anderson as well as Charles Bassey kind of hedging out high has blocked Keaton Wallace's vision and really made him uncomfortable off the bounce specifically. He's had a hard time this evening. 87-45. And Phil, right now, both Jackson and Wallace sitting at 10 points apiece. That's a far cry of the 72 combined points that they had the last time they were in this building. And the 44, they average inside for Anderson and the human highlight, able to go up amongst the trees. Drops in his first bucket of the night. Jackson back out there and gets the shooter's roll. John Jackson, I mean, his 40-minute averages are impressive. Impressive, a staggering 29.5 rebounds and three assists per 40 minutes of play. I mean, this guy really gets it done. And he and Wallace still just sophomores, so Steve Henson has a lot to look forward to with the Roadrunners. Jackson. That time, the call goes his way. Hollingsworth looking on in disbelief. 49-47, Roadrunners in the lead. Well, Javon Jackson doing what he can to will his team towards victory. It's a tough effort from the Hilltoppers this evening. All right, now second chance points in favor of the Roadrunners, 16-6, but as you might expect with Charles Bassey, points in the paint. 18 to 12, the Hilltoppers lead. And it is a two-point game. Looking to make it a house of pain right now, Western Kentucky. And as you take a look at Steve Henson, learned his trade from a coaching perspective alongside Lon Kruger after an NBA career that spanned five different teams, actually ended up in Italy. They're maybe opening the door for DeNicolau, returning the favor. Well, Steve Henson, he is the reigning coach of the year for Conference USA, and he brings, obviously, a lot of experience and extensive resume um, and is building something like a really fun brand of basketball in San Antonio. These Roadrunners are quite the show. And they do like to light it up in the top 20 when it comes to pace of play. Pass off for Cronin. Dishes for Ayaye, and he drops it home. Five point lead. Talking about this, Megan. 
to me, this kind of has the feel of last week's game against UAB, where it just kept expecting the Blazers to pull away, but Western kept them close. They never did, and the Hilltoppers pipped it at the wire, but you kind of sense something else that Western Kentucky might be just on the edge of a run. It seems to me that they were just one run away. As <laughs> you see Hollingsworth with the putback there. It seems as though they're right on the edge. And Hilltoppers are one run away from being able to take and possibly keep this lead. And one thing of note, I really think they have the advantage on the interior. And I think that Bassey needs a few more touches. Um, and also, Western Kentucky really thrives in the open court. They need a few fast breaks and easy baskets to get themselves going. Wallace again comes up hard on the shot. Good work by Bior to win it back. Well, from a Western Kentucky perspective, the fact that they're holding the two, Jackson and Wallace, to 7 of 22 shooting, and UTSA still in front, that has to cause some concern for Stansbury. It absolutely does, but I think that there's lots of things to talk about in this huddle. We'll be back with more. No, not just senior night, family night fun for the whole family in Bowling Green Western Kentucky and again it does have some tradition playing since 1914 over a century's worth of basketball little newer to the equation the Roadrunners of UTSA and take a look at some of the other results Marshall closing out strong Rice similar story against Charlotte Southern Miss pipping Old Dominion but then again the Monarchs had already clinched the top spot in the tournament and La Tech with a six point edge in the second middle Tennessee against UTEP still to come. Bill Shane alongside Megan Perry Rick Stansbury. Well, this is getting close to his time. Give you a look at what happens when Western Kentucky gets a late lead but at the moment Roadrunners keeping them at an arm's distance. The long arms of Javon Jackson, though, pushing him a bit further away. Listen, too much time. You cannot help off of Javon Jackson. Ooh. Anderson driving in hard. In the block there, late block by Bjor. But in that last possession, possession, Javon Jackson, you cannot help off of him. You cannot lose him. You have to trail and be on him. Know what he had for breakfast. That's how tight you need to be on him. That is way too much time. He lets it fly. I mean, I like to say Javon Jackson, he's Steph Curry-like in the sense of he doesn't need time to be able to get the shot off, and he doesn't have to be square to the basket. Saw him as he backed away. That nasty brace on that left knee. All precautionary after his season came to an abrupt close last year. You also see a little bit of tape on that left shoulder a couple games ago. He started to feel a little tenderness. I don't know if that's necessarily a factor. It seems to be okay tonight, but um, if you get late into the season, it's a grind, and, you know, injuries, bumps, and bruises are part of the game. Anderson, Mr. Steele, gets it away, cross midcourt, but he can't keep it in, and the Roadrunners dodge a bullet. A really great effort by both teams there, diving on the floor, trying to save or gain the possession. The UTSA, the quick hands by Josh Anderson and Bior with the back tip. And Josh Anderson just could not grasp it. Anderson over a thousand points, 50 assists, 50 steals, and 20 blocks. He does it all. Well, it's a quiet night, but not necessarily characteristic of how he usually plays, but a major factor for this Hilltop team. And Rodriguez wasn't quite ready for it as the team's both showing some nerves here. Again, what's on the line for Western Kentucky is clinching second place. The UTSA would be clinching a top four spot and the bye that goes along with it. You talked about how long a season it is. This is the 30th game for UTSA in the 31st for Western Kentucky. So even that one extra day of rest is gonna help. It, it absolutely is. You have to take all that you can get at this point in time. But hey, it's March, right? And you have to bring your March Madness game. Turn it up and be ready. Under 10 minutes to go. Anderson whips it into the corner for Savage underneath Bassey draws the contact foul against Rodriguez Look at that footwork by Bassey he's so elite I think that's what makes them 
you know, such a really highly touted out, touted after player. He works very quickly the spin to get deep position into the paint, but nice wide target. That's there's not much you can do about that once he gets that type of positioning. By the way, that's the third foul against Rodriguez. Three apiece against Jackson and Wallace. And all three of them are out there at the moment. So Steve Henson rolling the dice a bit with nine minutes left to go. Savage carrying three fouls on the court for Western Kentucky. Two-point game, nine minutes to go. Well, if Western Kentucky is going to make a push, push, it most likely is going to start now. And it has to go through the hands, I believe, of Charles Bassey. He needs more touches. Whether he's scoring or not, he can facilitate and find shooters on the perimeter. Four for Jackson. Quickly double teamed. A little shake and bake at the top, but it won't fall. Gets his own rebound underneath. Or bounced away Rodriguez and a little scoop by Bior. Wasteful shooting by the Roadrunners. And on the run, Western Kentucky trying to strip it away from Bearden, but too much contact. And that's going to be the fourth of the game against Wallace. That's really difficult because in that last play, you see Wallace going, getting back. He does definitely get a piece of Bearden's arm. But Keaton Wallace has had a difficult time with the refs tonight. The call is just not going his way. And really disrupting his rhythm. Five turnovers as well. It has not been a good game for the sophomore out of Dallas. Bearden on senior night, closing in on 500 assists to go along with his 1,300 points from his time at Buffalo and Western. Tries the three, in and out, rebound Bior. Well, for all the back and forth and the ups and downs, it's only a two-point game here. For I mean, it is definitely a grind between these two teams this evening. And he's kind of ridden that wave for almost the entirety. Seemed to slip out of Jackson's hands. Long outlet and slippery on the other side as well as Anderson can't hold on. Good work by Bjorn to tie him up. And the Roadrunners will get possession. Is there something on the ball because it is having a lot of both teams having a lot of difficulty really just holding on maintaining the possession it's being bobbled all over the place five times this game has been tied four times the lead has changed which makes you think it's been a somewhat close game but UTSA has been in front nearly 26 minutes to less than two for Western Kentucky but as you said still just a two-point game another jump ball and this one will go the Hilltoppers favor 55 53 less than eight to go well the Hilltoppers are doing an excellent job trying to lock down on defense and get this lead back against UTSA it's 55 53 the Roadrunners over the Hilltoppers That would be Little Red. <laughs> UTSA with a two-point lead. Just to give you an idea how this second half has gone, both teams with more turnovers than field goals in the second half. Well, we see there, that was the one opportunity I think that Western Kentucky has had in recent memory to convert in the open floor, and I think that has a lot to do with the turnover no easy shots really for either team and when they do get a close look at the basket it's been difficult to convert i mean we saw utsa had trouble dip trouble uh, converting with like four attempts at it and western kentucky they just seem to be a hair away like i said from a run Road, roadrunners haven't scored in 226 and western in their last three minutes as we take a look at hollingsworth and he's actually stepped back and changed his game a little bit with the arrival of Charles Bassey, turning more into a defensive presence, a shutdown guard. I think it's just put some of his defensive capabilities on display, but uh, let's be clear, he is still the leading scorer for the Hilltopper, so he can get it done on both ends of the floor. Two-point game, seven and a half to go. Fifteen on the shot clock. Yaya passing it off. Cronin on that double pump gets it to fall. Listen, Cronin has had himself a solid game. I mean, 
for a lot of people, he may not necessarily shock you with the numbers or you may not even be impressed with the eye test, but let me tell you, he is steady. He is fundamentally sound and he plays within himself. He doesn't do more than he knows he's capable of. Right about at his average of 7.7 .7 boards a game. Ball pulled down by Jackson, tape and all. Onan's tough. I have to tell you, I really am impressed for what I see from him this evening. He is contributing in the way that his team needs him, scoring within the offense. Trying to get the same performance out of Rodriguez and Bior as well. As you pointed out, when you have a dynamic duo with Jackson and Wallace, well, in soccer there's the saying, you can only have so many maestros. Every so often you need someone to carry the piano. <laughs> Bassey can carry it and play it. <laughs> Absolutely. There's so much he can do. Charles Bassey, I mean, we've talked about it all season long. It's not just the ability, ability to score or block. It is his presence on the floor. He can just stand in the middle of the lane and he's going to draw some attention. You know, so it's just about what his presence does. It opens up other things for his teammates. And a dribble, sneaking it under the fingertips of Bearden. Off balance shot, but sent down to the court by Anderson. And Jackson will get a chance from the line. Boy, Javon Jackson, he really takes the beating. You see Bassey again with the solid post position, right on the block, providing a wide target, you know, something you can't miss at all. And it's no contest when he gets two feet into the paint in the way he did in that last possession. One of ten finalists for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Center of the Year, and he's just a freshman. Second in freshman in rebounding among the nation with 14 double doubles. A little below his rebounding average, just six on the night. When we talked about Bassey as a freshman. He has nine Conference USA Freshman of the Week honors and the rest of the entire conference with eight. It just tells you how he has dominated this season. Swish by Jared Savage. Now nine points on the night. Crowded middle arena trying to get behind this team, give them a little bit of energy to get over the hump. Looking to return the favor, but the shot by Yaye hits front and back. Savage trying to provide a spark here. Well, Savage is someone that I think Coach Stansberry has been waiting for to heat up. I mean, he's a very capable scorer. Can take over the game, quite frankly, at will. Nicolau, a little quiet in the second half. Slapped away by Savage. Fighting for the ball. Goes out, and it's going to go Hilltopper's direction. To Nicolau, just two points in the second half as he's going ice cold. With the nickel out, you know, I think that it's been a tough second half for him because the Hilltoppers have done a better job of just tracking him. A lot of his shots in the first half were uncontested, but he made them well aware of his presence and they keyed in on him. Driving in, Bearden, but it almost rolls in. Falls for Wallace, who's out there with four fouls. Launches himself out of bounds to try and get possession, but starts a break the other way that Bassey ends emphatically. A big time play by Western Kentucky. Keaton Wallace with the turnover was trying to go one on four. That's not a recipe for success at all. And Charles Bassey, Bassey with the monster finish at the other end. So in the lead now, the Hilltoppers. And it's a game of catch up for the Roadrunners traveling as the snowball picking up speed. Well, Maybe this is that run you were talking about. It is, and it's starting with defense. The defensive intensity in this arena has ratcheted up over the past couple of minutes, and I think it definitely is causing UTSA to be a little bit uncomfortable, forcing some turnovers. And right now, UTSA, they've racked up 18 turnovers over the course of this game. You have to credit this Hilltopper defense. And something dug out of the notes that Rick Stansbury in the late going when his team is able to grab a lead they are nearly unbeatable 
the lead with five minutes remaining, 51 and three. Almost sounded like the Jaws theme there, but a bit of a feel like the shark was finally grabbing hold as they've pulled in front. Just over four minutes left. So the difference maker has been the defense for Western Kentucky. All of a sudden, the defense has showed up and loud. They are causing problems for the Roadrunners. Now Bearden. Now launching it in for Bassey. Good steal by DeNicolau. And then with 42 among the team leaders. HSA needs something to go their way. Just one of their last seven have gone in. Wallace, two of nine on the night. Stop and pop, and it drops from long distance. Nice by Yaye. Returning the favor the other way, Jared Savage. Now he's in double digits. Here we go. This is the shootout, I think, that we were talking about earlier. Offense for both teams starting to get into rhythm. Well, it's not the Alamo. It's Bowling Green, Kentucky. But the shots are coming fast and furious. Just over three minutes left in the game. 15 on the shot clock for Savage. Setting the pick, a mini roll, and Bassey makes it look easy. Well, Charles Bassey, we talked about it. I think that the offense has to go to and through him, and Hollingsworth recognizing that, getting him some touches. Bassey up to 15 points and six rebounds on the evening. And Wallace playing with four fouls. Jackson's on the bench with three. Tied at 65, high off the glass, but it won't drop, and Bassey pulls down his seventh board. Anderson. Hasn't been his night shooting, but he's done a lot of the little things. Well, it's the little things that matter. Coach Stansberry's been talking about down the stretch. It is the little things, the difference of just maybe a possession or a hustle play or two that will be the win or the loss. Anderson back to his left, but it rolls off the rim, Bassey trying to poke it free. And across midcourt, they'll take a break. Just under two minutes to go, and it's tied again at 65. Both teams grinding it out, but it's been the defense of late for the Hilltoppers that have made things interesting, getting out in the open floor, and Charles Bassey making sure we know his name. We're all tied up. Break. Well, it has been a battle tonight for both teams, and UTSA having to fight for their points. Western Kentucky holding on for dear life. Well, I think that UTSA is right where they want to be on the road. I think an impressive performance by them this evening. Taking a look, though, at what has happened compared to their 96-88 shootout back at the end of January. And well, Western knew they needed to control the two, and they have been able to do that. 42 points less, but we might be headed to overtime again. There's definitely lots of basketball ahead of us still. Oh, it's just a little bit of time reading the clock, but a lot to be decided still. And Jackson and Wallace, only 30 points combined tonight as opposed to the 72 they finished with last time in Middle Arena. But make no mistake about it, it it's not about how much they score, it's about when and how they score. So they like to take the big shot. They do not shy away from the moment. I expect the ball to be in their hands to go down the stretch. You said controlling Jackson and Wallace. Ball flipped inside, trying to pull it down was thrown. And the other side, you're talking about clogging the paint. And in some ways they have out rebounding the Hilltoppers 31 to 25. But even though they haven't been getting that many rebounds, 26 to 14, Western Kentucky leading in paint points. And Western Kentucky, also the difference for them is their defense. I think their defense has spurred their offense. They were able to get some stops, and that's led to a really healthy field goal percentage of late. They're five of their last seven shots. So course, and as you point out, 19 turnovers. Absolutely, that's been a, a huge difference in points off turnovers. You see 21 to 18. 
Anderson at the top, finding Savage. Savage four of seven, four of five behind the arc. Hollingsworth, Jackson guarding him. Trying to keep it in play. Bior on the ground and in the spotlight. It's going to be his fourth foul. Maybe a bit of a late call there, but Bior going to pick up the foul. I think the push on Savage as Savage flew out of bounds. So Bior and Wallace both with four fouls. Jackson with three. Savage and Anderson on the court for the Hilltoppers with three fouls apiece. Savage gets his first trip to the line on the night. 13 points. Make it 14. Four players in double digits. But we'll see what Western Kentucky comes up with. I am actually surprised you know, not too much pressure has been put on the backcourt for UTSA to make it a little bit more difficult for them to bring it up and get a look. Jackson rebound Bassey. That's his eighth of the night and a chance for Western to bleed the clock a bit. Just like against UAB, taking the lead late and now looking to hold on. Well, it's great that the Hilltoppers have the lead, but I trust me on this, Phil. They are not entirely comfortable just being up two points because UTSA, they have a bit of a reputation for coming back with just a small amount of time on the clock. The Roadrunners, they went on a 22 to 4 run over the final three minutes to get a win over ODU. Pete Wallace hit a big go ahead three pointer in that game. So, one of the most amazing comebacks really in UTSA history. But when they had three minutes to go, they, they definitely did a lot of work in that time. So, just to say with 55 seconds left, the potent scores that UTSA has on the floor, you know, they are in no way, shape, or form out of this. See, see Henson. Well, he might be emphatic with the dry erase marker, but keeping his cool. His team's been here before, as you pointed out. They have, so they're carrying that confidence, but uh, definitely a big hill to climb. They're going to have to take care of the basketball and continue to get the ball in the hand of their score. It's going to have to come through Wallace and Jackson. I think they're going to have to get a couple looks at it, um, you know, here to see if they're able to close in on the lead and or take the lead, but I don't think that they have to get it all in one possession. Western Kentucky, 50% shooting here in the second half, 42% for UTSA who have gone scoreless over the last two and a half. Chance to stretch this out to a two possession game. Bearden, the senior, leads but can't get it to fall. Rebound pulled down by Fronin. So a chance to get back in front for the Roadrunners. Although, a 10 seconds difference in the shot clock, so the Hilltoppers should get another chance. Jackson flips it across, trying to keep it alive to Nicolau, and he might have just saved the game. Nine seconds, Jackson, oh my, from 25. Listen, ice cold water in his veins. Javon Jackson is a gamer. He lives for this moment. No surprise there that the ball is in his hands and he is able to convert. Once again, he quiets Diddle Arena. 20 points on the game, 15 of them here in the second half. Quick timeout. 20 seconds remain. And a one-point lead for the Roadrunners. Take a look here. This won't show up in the box score, but Giovanni De Nicolau might have just saved this game for UTSA. Well, Javon Jackson making up for what would have been a very big turnover there. He just sizes you up, lulls the defense to sleep with a little bit of the dribble, heavy dribble, and then just lets it fly. Remember, we said in the gym range, possibly out of the gym range, you have to have a hand up on him and be in his face as soon as he crosses half court. You see the air it passed there, but then the save actually sets him up, and he just lulls Hollingsworth to sleep with the quick rise and fire at the bottom of the net. Big shot, sir. 20 seconds exactly on the clock. Steve Henson 
talking about rotation. Anyways, what to do should they get the ball back? Western Kentucky is going to have a chance now, though. It's a slim one-point lead as they look for their 17th win of the season. Hey, Jackson. They are in 20-plus points scored in 19 of the last 22 games. But right now, their job for UTSA is about defense. And I anticipate for the Hilltoppers, there is a lot that they can work with. And I definitely think that Charles Bassey will get a touch that might open up the perimeter. We'll definitely see the hand, the ball in the hands of Hollingsworth and or their senior, Lamonte Bearden. Well, whoever gets the win will have earned it tonight. UTSA now focused on defense. The Hilltoppers, 15 on the clock and dished off to Hollingsworth. Wallace with him, driving his beard and up off glass. It won't fall, but he is fouled. He'll head to the line with a chance to put the Hilltoppers in front. 73% from the line on the year. And Lamont Bearden, three of four on the night. Monte Bearden determined to get to the basket, gets into the middle of the lane, draws the foul, but cannot convert. The senior with an opportunity to close this game, possibly on the line. Now by DeNicolau, who now has three from the line. Needs to make it to tie it. Six and a half seconds left. He does. Tied at 68. Now, they get the inbounds. Are we headed to overtime again? Jackson behind the back dribble. Stripped. Bearden from midcourt. And it falls well short. We've got time for some extra basketball. Well, how about that? These two teams giving it all they have on senior night. Lamonte Bearden with the opportunity to close it out, but he'll get a couple more minutes to figure things out. 68-68, UTSA and Western Kentucky going to the extra session again. January 31st, it ended 96-88. Javon Jackson, a career-high 46 points on that night. It was his key bucket that kept this one alive, but Bearden on his night gets us tied again at the end of regulation. Well, Bearden will get a few more minutes to play on his home for, floor at Diddle Arena to try to figure out if he can will his team to victory, but really an outstanding performance in regulation for both teams. Jackson with 20 points to lead the way for UTSA and Bearden with 15 for the Hilltoppers. Well, it isn't over just yet. Rick Stansbury, a little extra coaching to go. In some ways, at this point of the season, going to overtime may be a little too much of a strain for the coaches, but much better than taking the L. Fowles stepping to the four again. Western Kentucky's been rather disciplined. Your and Wallace both with four and Jackson with three. So the Roadrunners may be a bit more vulnerable. Well, that definitely is something to watch is the Roadrunners look to, look to be a, in a bit more of foul trouble and a loss of either uh, of Wallace and his four. Or Jackson is huge as both of them we talked about it combined they are responsible for 56 percent of this Roadrunners offense. And tonight 33 of the 68 points to Nicolau has stepped up with 15 but only two in the second half. Here's the way things started today and Western Kentucky might end up seeing that second pot slip a little bit and UTSA would clinch a bye and they still have one game left at the end as they'll be taking on Southern Miss on the weekend with a chance to climb into that two spot. So a five minute extra session and to the tip again. One by Bassey. Mm -hmm. 
credit to UTSA. Western started to get that run, started to build the momentum. But the Roadrunners snuffed it out. Look over far side for Anderson. It's Bearden, whose free throw got us here. Can't get it to fall. Anderson almost tips it in, and Bassey does. Up to 17 on the night. Charles Bass in the beginning of that possession was working so hard for positioning. He didn't get the ball, but he was able to crash the glass, get the tip in for the score. Ron Jackson drawing Hollingsworth out. Almost lost possession, but then makes it up as he goes along. An easy lay in by Fronin. So difficult to contain. When you think you have him, when you think you shut him down. Sometimes that's when Javon Jackson at his best. Jackson, his second assist to go along with 20 points. Anderson sent it too long off the back of the rim, slapped away. Chance for UTSA to take the lead. Your team that likes to run and gun UTSA, do they tighten the collar a bit in the extra session? I think so. I think that UTSA really struggled with turnovers, especially early in the second half during regulation. Um, I think that the slower places helped them. And Jackson just putting the moves out on the perimeter against Hollingsworth is able to draw the foul, and I believe we'll get three shots at the free throw line. So dynamic, so difficult to guard. Jackson flings it up, and it scoots off. Even with that awkward look, 83% from the line, so... Nails the second. Jackson with 21 points, and you have to consider that contained if you compare it to his last performance where he finished with 46 points. It's two of three, now five of six on the night. It's a two-point lead for the Roadrunners. Stepping out on Anderson, who handles it well. Bjor has to scramble back. From distance, Savage. Bassey reaches those long arms out, but then Western can't hold on. Jackson, the roundabout way. In for Bjor. Hops at the top. And they will call it on the travel. I thought, actually, that Nicolau had stepped possibly out of bounds. He didn't see that vantage point. But regardless, the turnover not what they were looking for in that possession. With Henson talking to his team, trying to keep them focused. Three minutes, three seconds. Well, what's really interesting, Phil, in the last couple of defensive possessions, we've seen Bjork kind of hedge out high. He's leaving Charles Bassey in the paint and going out to contest the guards on the perimeter. And I think that's risky business because in no way, shape, or form do you want to leave Charles Bassey unguarded under the basket or possibly with a mismatch with a guard on him. That's risky business, business and defense for the Roadrunners. Ball uh, flipped into the corner. Hollingsworth, Bassey turns baseline. Looking on in disbelief was Rodriguez who gets whistled for the foul. That's his fourth. The or, by the way, fouling out, so body's starting to fall for Steve Henson. Well, Rodriguez just doing his best to push Charles Bassey off the block out of his comfort zone. He's at a loss for words, not sure what else he can really do. Third overtime game for both of these teams. Mentioned the game at the end of January. They followed that up at Marshall with another overtime game, which they won. Meanwhile... UTSA just a couple games after their overtime win against the Roadrunners won at Rice in a double OT session tied at 72 are we headed for their second double OT of the season Wallace to Jackson back to Jackson slapped away by Hollingsworth drawing contact only the second foul against the Hilltoppers defensive genius. 
Von Jackson has mastered the art of one being able to draw the foul, leaning in, showing, showing the contact, creating the contact, and showing it. It's it's a skill to tell you the truth to be able to position your body in a way that at least creates the illusion <laughs> of the foul, if nothing else. Well, it draws the referee's eyes for sure. Hits them both. Only 472. Massey out high. He can shoot from there, but dishes it off for Hollingsworth. Looked like he had it. Jackson pulls down the board. That's his seventh rebound. 24 points, seven rebounds, and two assists. Chance to push out to a two position possession lead. Eaton Wallace has been really quiet. The size of Josh Anderson has bothered him. Nicolau. Oh, he's owned that shot all game long. Yeah, the Nicolau's been great off the bounce, especially going to the right, finishing high off the glass. Only a second bucket since halftime. Clipped in for Bassey. 19 points on the night. Backing in against Rodriguez. Oh. And launches it in. Great execution by the Hilltoppers. That's exactly what they wanted. Charles Bassey, he can eat all day when he gets that type of one on one positioning. Mm -hmm. All day before. One rebound away from his 15th double double of the season. Two point lead. UTSA trying to bleed the clock. Jackson from long distance. So cool, so calm and collected. He shoots that, expecting to make it. A lot of people towards the end of the game will shoot, hoping that it goes in. No, he sh shoots it with the expectation that that ball is the bottom of the net. They held him to two of nine shooting in the first half for just five points. He's at 27 and starting to pull away. A five-point lead, 44-43. Western fought back to force the extra session, but Javon Jackson has stepped into the spotlight. It's going to be Javon Jackson one on one against Hollingsworth. You see Coach Henson clearing it out, giving Jackson room to work. Eight seconds, seven seconds, another long range shot. In and out. Bassey pulls it down. He's got the double double. They need more than one possession. Savage from distance. Hollingsworth battling for it, but it crossed, and that one might be enough for UTSA to let out a sigh of relief. Javon Jackson with that signature just kind of low to sleep rise and fire that's his shot that's what he does so well and that's the reason he is Conference USA's leading scorer so it's a five-point game 15 seconds left the last chance saloon for Western Kentucky